Thanks for uh, coming to uh, our New Year's Resolution Solution Lecture tonight. Um, some of us are live here uh, at the Floridian. Some of us are on Facebook Live, so I want to thank both groups for coming. Uh, it's that time of the year again. It is uh, New Year's Resolution time, and everyone knows what the number resolution is, and that is weight loss and getting in shape, okay? Um, so every year we make this commitment to ourselves that we're going to eat better, we're going to exercise, and we're going to get in much better shape this year. Now, traditionally, uh, we Americans do this every year in this last about six weeks, something derails us, uh, we get frustrated, or uh, other things get in the way, we, we get off track, and then we're going to do it next year. For some odd reason, we always want to start with the new year um, to get the shape. Okay? So, I'm going to go over some information uh, that you may or may not know uh, that will help you keeping your New Year's resolutions because there's a lot of disinformation out there about weight loss, okay? So, what is the truth about weight loss, okay? What do the weight loss industry people don't, don't want you to know? Uh, and that is that the things that are in the media the methods that they propose to use only work on a temporary basis because they want to cut calories and do a lot of cardio. And both, both of those things are only temporary fixes. They will help you lose weight immediately in a few weeks, but they really curtail your long-term weight loss goals. Okay? Now, can anyone guess how much money is spent every year on weight loss products? No, no, no. Okay. You said yes. Okay, quite a bit of money. So let's look at that. An estimated 45 million Americans go on a diet each year, right? And Americans spend $33 billion each year on weight loss products. That's an amazing amount of money. Now, there are several reasons that weight loss is such a concern. We're going to go over all those things. But that's a staggering amount of money. That's a lot of college tuition. That's a lot of homes, vacations, cars uh, that people could be getting for that $33 billion, right? So we do this every year. So. Let's see how this is working for us. Obviously not too well. Okay, this is a chart that goes from the year 1999 to 2018, and there is a 12% spike in obesity um, in America. Okay, so I'm sure that this trend um, is continuing. So the reason that this happens is because the conventional weight loss methods predispose us to lose 10 pounds, gain 12 back. The next year we lose 10 pounds, gain 12 back. And our weight each year inches up and up and up as a society, not as an individual. So obviously there's a flaw in our thinking as far as weight loss and exercise goes, okay? So we're obviously taking the wrong approach, okay? So why do we Americans use the same techniques for decades that have failed us over and over again, right? Well, one thing is there is a lot of misinformation out there and people genuinely don't know what the best method is to get weight off and keep weight off, okay? The short-term solution is cut your calories really low, get on the treadmill for hours, and you're gonna lose weight. And that will work short-term, but it hurts you in the long-term. 
And the other reason, I can give you 33 billion reasons why the weight loss companies keep coming out with the new, latest and greatest weight loss tools, weight loss technologies, um, and weight loss secrets each and every year, and they're forgotten the very next year. Because these methods make them a lot of money and they only have temporary success. Okay? Whoops. Why we fail? Conventional weight loss strategies make us fat. As, as bad as that sounds. And the reason is those strategies actually damage our metabolism. They make our metabolism work slower. Okay? Weight loss diets particularly do this, especially the ones that are very low calorie, five to 900 calories a day, and a lot of cardio, and what this does is throws the body into starvation mode, okay? Your response to exercise is based on survival. Your response to diet <coughs> is based on survival. Like I always tell people, the body doesn't have an ego. It's trying to survive. So. If you cut your calories too low, the body goes into starvation mode because it thinks there's a famine going on. It has to slow its metabolism down in order to survive, right? Long bouts of, of cardio on the treadmill, like two hours, two and a half hours, actually make the body cannibalize lean muscle tissue for energy, which hurts your metabolic rate, okay? And these things are unsustainable because who can stay on a 900 calorie a day diet all year round? Okay, it can't be done. So there has to be a better way to do this, right? So I'm going to propose something really radical here that most weight loss companies aren't going to tell you they're going to focus on weight, uh, calories in, calories out, uh, cardiovascular activity. I'm going to tell you to stop trying to lose weight. That sounds kind of intuitive, right? Stop trying to lose weight. In fact, let's focus on health improvement. Let's focus on eating things that help every aspect of your body, right? Foods that improve energy, improve immune, immune function. How important is that these days to have a strong immune system, right? Uh, improve your heart health. Dec uh, decrease cholesterol, improve neurological and brain function, and improve joint function. This all comes from proper nutrition. When you eat for health as a priority, it has an effect on your weight, a positive effect on your weight. Okay? Because nutrient-dense foods are no in calories. Think about that. Nutrient-dense foods are low in calories, which means you can eat more of them, right? Not be hungry and nourish the body with all the things it needs to be able to exercise, function, digest food properly, and do all the things it needs to do. Okay. So because they're, they're low in calorie, um, you can eat a lot of them and satisfy your appetite. Also, the body senses how much, how much nutrients that it's going to get. So if you're eating nutrient-dense food, that's another way that you're going to satisfy your appetite. Okay? When you eat properly, it aids in nutrient absorption, which helps your overall health and your energy levels, your immunity. Uh, your cardiovascular health, neurological and muscular function, right? Lower daily caloric consumption without making you feel hungry. Now, that is, uh, shows you a mind shift from, um, I've got to starve myself, I've got to cut my calories, do I have to eat differently to provide myself a higher quality of health? In doing that, you're you're very likely, or almost certainly,
going to eat less calories per day. Okay? So that's the first thing. Okay? The processed foods that we eat all the time, okay, are high in calories. Especially carbohydrates, sugars, fats. They're low in nutrients, vitamins, minerals, uh, phytonutrients, all the things that we need to stay healthy. They have artificial chemicals and preservatives. They tend to create inflammation, and that lowers your nutrient absorption. We had this uh, lecture before about gut health, and it's very true that your gut health affects your immune system and affects a lot of other um, aspects of your health. It causes hunger, and it causes you to overeat because your food is not nutrient dense enough to satisfy the body's needs. Okay? Another reason that you overeat is this causes blood sugar fluctuations, which make you feel hungry. Okay, so a lot of people don't like to eat this way because the food doesn't taste as good. So if you're gonna take that out of the equation and have recipes that taste good and nutritious and low calorie, you are more likely to stay with that kind of eating plan, correct? Right? So there's some books up here that really help you stay focused on food. Okay? Malia Dell, who uh, is at the Floridian with us, uh, wrote a book some years ago. There's a link in the description uh, on my Facebook page. Also, Eat to Live with Dr. Joel Furman really shows you the why medically on, on a nutritious eating, especially eating a lot of vegetation. And uh, The Plant Paradox from Dr. Stephen Gundry is another recipe book um, where you make your healthy food taste good. I think that is the, the hurdle that most people um, have a problem with. They don't want to eat boring food or, or tasteless food, and they want to enjoy their food, which is understandable. Okay? So what if we could spend less time in the gym and get better results? Wouldn't that be great? Instead of an hour and a half on the treadmill, and, and trying to cut our calories down. That would allow us to spend more time with family. What if we could eat more food and not be hungry? What if we could lose weight faster while also increasing our energy, gain, gain strength, and not only keep get your results, but keep your results, okay? Here's another part of the mind shift. If, you're, if your mindset is, I'm going to lose a certain amount of weight, 20 pounds, 30 pounds, and you reach that goal, then what? I've reached my goal. Now I can celebrate it. And now I can take it easy. Right? So it's a finite goal. Right? Once you reach that 30 pound mark, you reach your goal. So the motivation isn't there. You slip back into old patterns, and next thing you know, next January, you make another resolution to do the same thing again. When your goal is health-oriented, that never goes away. When your goal is to keep myself nourished, get my sleep, get my hydration, get proper exercise, because I don't want to have a heart attack, I don't want to stroke, I don't want to get cancer, that that motivator never goes away. This helps you keep that mindset of health rather than weight loss. In the process of doing this, you lose weight and your body naturally finds its proper weight that it should be uh, each and every day because your body has a way of regulating things. Myself, um, I don't calorie count. And Michelle will tell you that I, I can eat, okay? But I eat proper types of foods. I eat until my hunger is satisfied, but I don't eat just to eat, okay? So my calorie intake is higher than most people because of the type of exercises that I do, but that doesn't mean it's gonna make me gain weight because my body's requiring that. Does that make sense? Okay, so when you shift your mind from a weight goal 
and calories and counting calories. Who enjoys counting calories? I know I don't. I think, I think it's pain in the neck. I think if you generalize and, and keep your nutrition low calorie, high nutrient dense, you don't have to worry about that as much. Okay. Okay. Exercise smarter, not longer, not harder. Okay. There are certain ways that you need to exercise to make your time in the gym efficient. Okay. So once you get your meal planning down, once you understand how to make your food um, taste good and palatable and enjoyable, and you get into that rhythm, and your exercise should be based on getting the most out of the, the gym time you have in the least amount of time, okay? Now, let's look at weight training versus cardiovascular training, okay? Weight training, on average, has an 18-hour afterburn effect, which means if you do a weight training session, your body's going to be in high calorie burn mode for up to 18 hours afterwards. Okay? I'm not going to get into all the specifics uh, of why that happens in this lecture, but just know that it happens. And for 30 minutes um, uh, of circuit training, you're going to get a lot more calorie burn than 30 minutes just on the treadmill. Okay, so let's let's try to um, conceptualize that. Okay. Now, weight training has an 18-hour afterburn effect. Cardiovascular training has very little afterburn effect because the adaptations and the adjustments of those exercise modes are totally different. Okay. Circuit training increases caloric expenditure because instead of doing straight training, doing a set, resting for a minute, doing another set, resting, and doing another set with the same muscle and resting, you're going from one muscle group to another, allowing those muscles to get proper rest while you're keeping your heart rate up as you divide these muscle groups up. Keeping your heart rate up during your exercise session increases the lower burn, right? Circuit training also decreases your duration in the gym. Okay? So you don't have to spend as much time in the gym and get other things that you like them. Okay? Circuit training conditions, conditions your heart because your heart is working at an elevated level. Uh, circuit training also increases daily metabolic output by building lean muscle mass. Okay? So cardiovascular training um, is pretty much, but not totally, limited to the time during your workout. So if you're on the treadmill for 35 minutes, 40 minutes, 50 minutes, your, your elevated caloric expenditure is pretty much um, pretty much limited to how much time that you put on there, okay? More time in the treadmill is needed to create the same amount of caloric expenditure that you get with a 30 minute training session doing circuit training, okay? Cardiovascular exercise does condition the heart. It's very good for you. I don't, I don't persuade people from doing it, but you have to do it in the proper uh, mode and amounts and at proper times, okay? It also increases your aerobic capacity, which means it increases your endurance. Okay? So those are the two different types of training. And with eating and properly modulating these training methods, you can maximize your weight loss. Okay? Increasing your daily metabolic output along with eating uh, for nutrition instead of weight loss will increase your metabolism by adding lean muscle mass, okay? For every pound of muscle that you put onto your body, you rest, you're raising your resting caloric expenditure um, 50 calories per day. So if you put two pounds of muscle on over a period of time, you're raising 100, 100 calories a day, and so on, right? Uh, increased lean muscle mass also increases the amount of um, output per exercise. So if you would gain two pounds of muscle or three pounds of muscle and you do a workout in the gym, you're burning more calories than you did before you gained that muscle. Okay? Uh, progressively increasing your muscle mass will progressively increase your, your resting metabolism. Okay? So these are the things that the weight loss companies don't go over with you. Because if they did, you wouldn't have 
to go back every year and try to lose this weight. If you follow a long-term goal with a long-term pattern of improvements, you're going to have long-term results. And if you have long-term results, you don't need to be making New Year's resolutions every year, right? Um, like I said, circuit training increases caloric expansion during your workout sessions. Progressive circuit training increases muscle mass and cardiac expenditure by increasing volume on the muscle groups. So this is a this is a um, a method that increases your metabolism through stages. And I don't have time to go into this today, but I'm going to give a lecture on progressive circuit training next week, both here live and on Facebook. I'm going to explain this in detail, how to increase your metabolism and your strength through progressive circuit training along with your meals. Okay. Now, these are some of the results. This is a poster that is coming out uh, very soon. Our own Rebecca in 19 weeks lost 13 pounds and 9.5 body inches. And Dory, who's in the audience with us, in 13 weeks lost 11 inches and 11 pounds, right? Because the progressive circuit training keeps you at a high cardiac uh, caloric output during your session and after your session. And of course, they watch what they ate, they ate nutritious food instead of junk food, and that's the result, okay? Here are two other folks that I've trained in New Jersey. Ebony, in 16 weeks, lost 77 pounds and 39 body inches. Uh, we did that for ABC Television. And Sheila, um, in New Jersey, finally broke her record. She went from a size 20 down to a size 10 and lost 104 pounds in 12 months, okay? So these methods of eating and exercising definitely work. The trick is not to make it a finite goal, to make it a health goal, and the weight loss becomes a byproduct of that, and a lasting byproduct of that. Okay? <coughs> Nutrient dense, dense foods and fat loss. Okay? Eating nutrient-dense foods which are lower in calorie while simultaneously increasing your daily caloric output has only one result coming, and that's fat loss. Okay? Not cutting calories, not starving yourself, not living on shades, not living on potions, pills, um, and all these miracle fat loss gimmicks that are coming out of it. That's the truth of it. Raising your metabolic output, decreasing <coughs> your uh, caloric can take through nutritious food. Okay? Nutritious foods increase your energy, allowing you to have more productive workouts as well. If you're eating if you're eating junk food and you went to the gym, you're gonna you're gonna eat around before your workout as productive as possible. Okay. Um, then there are also nutrient dense foods aid in the cellular function during exercise too. Okay, so it's very important to focus your mind on eating for nutrition and wellness first and weight loss second. Okay, so here's our summary. Eating nutrient-dense foods aids in health and weight loss. Health is first, weight loss is a byproduct of that. Eating these foods forces your body to burn stored fat. It really has no choice because your calories are down, your work output, and your caloric output is up. Weight training increases daily metabolic output. Weight training has an 18 hour afterburn effect. That's a very key point that you want to get benefit hours on end after you leave the gym rather than just get on, getting on the treadmill. Not that that's not important. It is important. I encourage people to do it, but it has to be done. Excuse me, done in a certain way. Okay. Progressive circuit training increases caloric expenditure exponentially. When you go through the system and you go through the levels, your caloric output is really going to go up. As long as you eat properly, you're really going to see muscle definition, toning, and body fat uh, go up and body fat go down. Okay? So if you follow this process, you never need to go on a diet again because in focusing on health and exercise, 
you're naturally going to find that you're going to be lean, muscular, full of energy, and healthy without focusing on losing weight. Okay? Does anyone have any questions? Did I explain that pretty clearly? Now, uh, did anyone learn anything new tonight that they hadn't heard before? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It really, really works well. <clears throat> um, I kind of devised that kind of about, about 23 years ago. You know, I thought about it, thought about it, how, how do I make this more effective? And, and I started doing it, and, and when people ate properly and showed up for their sessions, they really got, really got terrific results. So, when you do these kind of things, weight loss no longer is an issue with you. But it does take discipline. You have to relearn um, your attitudes about food. But if you get cookbooks that are uh, really emphasize healthy eating with positive taste, with good tasting foods, you won't mind sticking to those those kind of meal meal plans. And actually, I can tell you from personal experience and experience with clients, if you eat cleanly for two months, you'll start to crave those clean foods. Dory can attest to that, right? Yep. I think Dory actually eats cleaner than I do. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so no one has any questions at all? Okay, great. I hope this is very helpful to you. And thank you for those uh, watching us on Facebook. We will be on Facebook again next week to break down the rest of circuit training, exactly how it works. I hope that helps you all as well. Okay? Thanks for coming.